hey there how's it going um so th this video is about um uh, reading data from Azure data lake storage uh through data databricks so i'm going to go through the step-by-step -step process on of how it's done basically so the first thing is i assume you have a azure data lake storage created and i assume you have a, a azure databricks workspace and uh, i also assume you have a azure key key vaults created um, so the, the first thing we have to do is basically have an, uh, an app registered so um, that will be our service principle so if you go to uh, Azure Active Directory if you can see this option here if you just click this uh, uh, hamburger you will see that uh, Azure Active Directory here so click it then here uh, you may not have this information here if you don't have an app register here but you can go here to register an app so app registration um go down here and and uh, enter your url if you have one if you don't have one you can enter a domain one so register your app then um so after you've registered your app right you will see this option here app registrations so it basically takes you to where you can see the list of your app right i've got this one here so after you've registered your app you you will get the application id which is client id you get the directory id which is also tenant id so um you will have all this information created generated for you the next thing you need to do is basically to create a secret for this uh, application basically your service principle secret so if you click on certificate and secret um you may have nothing here if you just registered it so the next thing you need to do is create add uh, create a new secret client secret so enter enter the description here then um add so it will automatically generate the secret value here for you and then the secret id um, so your secret value will be uh, shown so you need to copy it and save it somewhere because after you've left this uh, page um, it's going to be hidden when you come back to it you will not be able to see it so it's better you copy it and save it somewhere because we are going to need it later so after this the next thing you need to do is basically give access to your storage enable your uh, application to access your storage so uh, go back to your storage if you, if you um, have storage right um, it should appear in the uh, recent view um, uh, area basically these are the list of my recent uh, resources that I viewed so it's going to be there so if you just click it and it will basically take you here go to containers if you don't have container you have to create it like here from here so you enter your container name and then you basically create it so this is the container I've created and uh, the access I'm going to give it so if you go to access control then go to add add row assignments so scroll down here and um, go to uh, storage uh, blob data contributor select it next 
go to members then I select members this is the user which is me and uh, the service principle the application that I created if you just search it um, so it should be here so add a one select next next to review it then assign it here already assigned it so i don't have to do it again so once you assign it if you come here you will see it you will see that as role assignment as a uh, storage plot data contributor so this is the app that you created earlier so after this role assignment the next thing we are going to do is uh, create a scope on our databricks so um so if we go to our databricks right so this is a databricks link so you copy this databricks link you go to a new tab paste it there and hash secret secret forward slash create scope there is issue there okay um i'm going to basically delete this part that has a um, notebook so i'm going to start from this part that has the id then the hash so this id then fo followed by hash then secrets then create scope okay now so that is how you can basically go to this page so the next thing is uh, you create your scope let me call it uh, data data breaks uh, scope secrets secrets scope so database secret scope will be your scope name so the azure keyword keyword need this uh, information dns name so if you go to your keyword right you will find this information so um let's go to keyword so this is my keyword name right if i create it right and i if i go to properties so this is the um so i should be able to see the keyword url uh uri which is this one all right so if i copy this keyword uri if i copy it right and i paste it here uh, that is not it so you just copy the keyword uri paste it there and go back copy the resource id then paste it there as well then after you've done that it will allow you to the the it will allow you to uh, create it so you just um, um click the create button then the keyword will be created for you created for you so um the next thing you have to do after that is basically um, go to so if you go back uh, to the okay yeah we are still in the keyboard so go to the keyboard right um, so you remember the application ID and the directory ID information that we got earlier why we created the application so um to uh, store that information click on add generate or import then whatever name you want to provide to uh to your for your application id just enter it here application id and um, then the uh the id of the application i think it's, it's here so if we go back to if you go back to the application you see all those information so store the application id here then create 
then you have the application ID information here. Then the same thing, uh, uh, the same thing goes with the uh, the client secret that you uh, uh, save earlier. So um, you need to store that information as well, as well as the directory ID. Okay. So after the after this, now we have this uh, uh, information in our keyboard. What you need to do is. So if you go to Azure, uh, I, I think the information, yeah. So this is the Azure uh, information. Um, uh, I mean, this is the configuration that Azure provided. So you can copy this one and paste it to your uh, Databricks notebook. And I assume you know how to create Databricks notebook. So. In this case, you are not providing the uh, uh, secret directly through the uh, database. So what you are doing here is basically, um, let me start my cluster first. So, um, so the directory ID, right? You know, we uh, provide our keyword name as a database secret scope, right? So to get the directory ID, now go to dbucs.secret.get. So the scope is database secret scope, and our keyword is a uh, directory ID, which is the information here. Um, directory ID. So uh, the next thing is application ID. So secret scope. Then the key is application ID. So we have that one here. So um, you can now start providing this information in this uh, uh, configuration provided by Azure here. So, but um, I used a different way, but it still this issue still work. This is the one uh, my organization is using. So I just try to make a, a try to be consistent so uh, here we are basically uh, using spark.conf.set uh, and providing fs.azure.account.type.storage storage account name the story account name is basically your uh, azure storage name then um, so you have this configuration right and then the, here we are basically providing the client secret which is basically this one um, so this is the client secret one so this is that is the one we are providing here data breaks uh, secret school that client secret one so um, after that here we are providing the directory id so after this conf uh, this configuration, after we've set this configuration, um, the next thing is the path. So we are using the Azure uh, Block File System Secure. Um, so then uh, colon two four slash just like you are giving HTTPS uh, um, URL right. Um, so we are using a BFSS. Then the container name is basically data. So if I go back here, data is our container name. And then um, we, so uh, container name, data at storage account name, which is this one. Then dot DFS dot code dot windows dot net. Then the data I want to read is person data dot txt. So if I go back to the story, if I click here, you see this file here, personData.txt. It has got some data inside it. So this is what I want to read. So um, after that, um, then you can go ahead with uh, your Spark um, uh, syntax. Then it will just uh, read the Spark, uh, the data for you. Then this is basically the result. 
so um yeah that is it that is how you can um access uh, um uh, also data uh, like uh, uh, storage uh, from your database so yeah that is it and uh, thank you for watching don't forget to hit the like button subscribe button and leave a comment have a lovely day and goodbye